rice, wheat, or flour, which one wakes up microbes the fastest? Soil stories, because every garden has a heartbeat. If you've been gardening for a while, you already know this one truth. Healthy soil isn't just dirt, it's alive. And the real heroes, the ones who turn stubborn soil into a thriving living ecosystem, are the microbes beneath our feet. They're microscopic, invisible to the naked eye, but gardeners can feel the difference when they're awake and active. Now here's the big question many gardeners keep asking me in the comments. Which one activates soil microbes faster, rice, wheat, or flour? It sounds simple, but there's a beautiful science and a bit of gardening magic behind the answer. Today on Soil Stories, we're digging deep into how these simple kitchen ingredients impact microbial life, how each one behaves in the soil, and which one gives you the quickest microbial wake-up call. Let's get our hands dirty, shall we? Before we compare the three, let's get on the same grounding. Soil microbes, bacteria, fungi, Actinomycetes don't just magically jump into action, they respond to food, especially carbon-rich foods, because carbon is their fuel. When you add a carbohydrate source to the soil, the microbes begin breaking it down. As they feed, their population increases, soil activity spikes, and your plants benefit from the improved nutrient cycling. This is why gardeners use things like rice water, compost teas, molasses, and yes, rice wheat and flour. But just because something feeds microbes doesn't mean it feeds them fast. What matters most is surface area, solubility, structure, and how easy it is for microbes to break down. That's where our three ingredients take completely different paths. Let's start with rice, the one most gardeners already know. Rice has been used in natural farming for generations, especially in methods like Korean natural farming, or KNF. It's an excellent microbe food, but, you know, it's not the fastest. Here's why. Whole grains like rice have an outer layer that slows down decomposition. They release carbohydrates gradually, which means microbes wake up slowly, but once they do, the effect is long-lasting. The food supply is stable, predictable, and steady. In the soil, rice behaves almost like a slow-release carbohydrate source. You bury it or mix it into compost, and it encourages a controlled microbial bloom. It's especially useful when you want to sustain activity over time, rather than trigger an immediate reaction. I often use rice when preparing substrates for indigenous microorganisms. The grain structure gives microbes a home and helps you capture a diverse population. But for gardeners who want speed, rice isn't the fastest, it's reliable but not rapid. Wheat grains sit somewhere between rice and flour. They're softer than rice, they absorb water more easily, and they decompose a little quicker. That means microbes are able to colonize wheat sooner than rice. However, wheat grains still have the same challenge, they're intact, compact, and coated with natural barriers that microbes must break through before getting to the good stuff inside. When you place wheat in the soil, the first wave of microbial activity goes into softening and opening the grain. Only after that does the feast begin. Wheat does offer more protein than rice, which can support fungal activity, but it still won't give you the instant microbial explosion many gardeners are hoping for. If you want a medium-speed booster for compost or soil ecosystems, wheat is a solid option. But again, it doesn't take the crown for speed. Now, let's talk about flour, the ingredient that surprises most gardeners when they realize just how powerful it is. If rice is the slow-release option, and wheat grains are the moderate one, then flour is the microbial espresso shot. So, why is flour so fast? Well, when wheat or other grains are ground into flour, something, you know, kind of magical happens. The surface area just increases dramatically, which means microbes have access to like thousands of tiny particles instead of just one hard grain. Microbes attach almost instantly, 
and digestion begins right away. Flour dissolves into the soil more quickly, and it mixes with moisture easily. There are no physical barriers to worry about, plus it contains simple carbohydrates that microbes just absolutely love. And the result of all this, a rapid, explosive microbial awakening. If you've ever mixed flour into compost, you've seen this happen. Within a day or two, the compost becomes warm, fluffy, and active. That heat isn't from the sun, it's from billions of microbes burning energy as they feast. This is why flour is so effective in making homemade bakashi, indigenous microorganism substrates, and compost boosters. It's the fastest way to fuel soil life when your goal is immediate microbial activity. But, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Flour breaks down so quickly that it can cause overheating in compost, anaerobic pockets if used in excess, and even attract pests if left on the soil surface. So, while flour is the fastest, it should be used sparingly and thoughtfully. If we're ranking purely by speed, the answer is clear. First, flour, fastest second, wheat grains, moderate, and third, rice, slowest. Flour wins because of its accessibility, solubility, and high surface area. Microbes don't have to wait for anything to break down. They're ready to feed immediately. But here's the beautiful part. Each one has a purpose, and each one benefits the soil differently. Let's break that down more deeply. If you want to jumpstart microbial life fast, like when reviving dead soil, preparing compost or supercharging mulch layers, flour is perfect. Flour works well when your compost is slow or cold, your soil is compacted and lifeless, you want immediate microbial action before planting or you're making bakashi or fermentations. Just remember, a little goes a long way. Mix it into soil or thin it with water before application to avoid clumping. Wheat grains are ideal when you need something between fast and slow. They're excellent for fungal growth and can be used in microbial traps or IMO preparations where grains act as both food and structure. Use wheat grains when you want a longer-lasting microbial food source. A substrate for fungal colonization, something softer and more versatile than rice, or a more sustained microbial pulse without the risk of fast decomposition spikes. Rice may be the slowest, but it isn't the least valuable. In many traditional farming systems, rice is preferred because it maintains structure for microbes, works well for capturing native microorganisms, doesn't break down too quickly, and avoids pests when buried properly. If your goal is to cultivate a diverse and stable microbial population, not just fast growth, rice is still a gardener's best friend. If you're asking, which wakes up microbes the fastest, the answer is clearly flour. But if you ask, which one is best for my garden, the answer depends on your goal. Choose flour for fast results, choose wheat for balanced feeding, and choose rice for diversity and long-term stability. You know, the beauty of natural gardening is that there's rarely a single right answer. Instead, we learn to use each ingredient like a tool, choosing the right one for the right moment in nature's rhythm. If you enjoyed this deep dive into soil science and the hidden world of microbes, make sure to subscribe to Soil Stories for more gardener-to-gardener -gardener wisdom, share this article with a fellow plant lover, and let's keep spreading the magic of living soil. Your soil has a story, let's tell it together.